Hey guys, Bullets for Freedom of Liberty here. Hope everybody's doing well. I know it's been a while since I've uh, posted a video. i got to find a place here to put my foot. Wanted to talk to you about different ways. I know on the Facebook pages, uh, the powder coating, you get a lot of questions on Bullets for Freedom of Liberty, uh, my method of madness. So I've got a myriad of different types of powder coats, from Eastwood to the powder by the pound. I got some Harbor Freight. Everybody starts out with Harbor Freight because it's like $6 a pound. But for an extra $4 a pound, you can get like a Mirror Green or Mirror Black or Bonded Chrome Black or Springfield Yellow. I mean, the colors go list goes on and on and on. Um, I know a big, um, a big, very popular one is the Ford Light Blue. Eastwood makes one. Uh, I've got just boxes of different types of powder coats that I've tried. Um, I've had really good luck with the the powder by the pound um, comes in the nice peanut butter jars, so it seems to hold up a lot better. But I've got my Mag, Lyman Mag 25. I've got my hollow point bullet mold modified by hollowpointbulletmolds.com. Uh, this one is the uh, 401. Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, this is a 356 for my 9mm. That's what I'm casting now. So I'm casting up the 9mm little hollow points. They come out to be about 115 grains. Uh, I just powder coat them and shoot them through my Glock and uh, my open gun. Um, I also have the hollow point modified by hollow point bullet mold in the 40. These are 175 grain, and that's the powder coat. I've got a batch in the oven right now. I, I just pulled a batch out um, the, on my tray, and I wanted just to walk through the process. As you can see here, if I can how it looks in the mirror. Yep, there you go, in the window, in the camera. So these are all done. Um, I do the stand-up method because it tends to come out a lot better. Um, much more consistent and easy to do. Yeah, it takes me a few extra minutes, but you know what? I'm out here anyways. I might as well enjoy what I'm doing. So wanted to uh, walk through the process as that one's going through. And thanks to uh, Fortune Cookie 45 LC, as you can see, I have got my, I'm sorry for the camera movement, we tighten that bad boy up. So, went to Bed Bath & Beyond, got me a bunch of these wire baskets, $4.99, not a big deal. Got my, my cardboard, and I've tumbled these for about 10 minutes. And I normally do multiple batches at a time, but I don't use that much powder coat. Um, this is the last of my 40 that I'm doing and so what I do is I just dump it in over the cardboard shake it out I'll go in there and wipe that up but what I really wanted to show you guys get that camera straight down okay so a lot of guys on the Facebook pages and whatnot um, always ask how you know how do you get the consistency well when you're powder coating hollow co hollow point bullets you can see that the hollow point fills up so after 10 minutes in the tumbler, I literally just sh shake them. I mean, the powder coat paint's not going to come off. Okay? Um, I'm not being easy with them. I just don't want them bouncing all over the place. But you can see the powder coat is not coming off. I can handle them. My hands have a little bit of powder coat. But the powder coat paint is not coming off. So you don't have to worry about whether or not with the higher quality paints, of the paint coming off and I can sit there and grind it and do whatever so there you go so you can see that all of the the bullets now have empty cavities so I use just I like what uh, loads of bacon does take a little bit into my hands um, rub it around on the rubber glove just to give it more of a buffer and I can handle these do with them what I want so let's move them over let me move the camera over in front of the table here. 
on the camera stand. And there we go. Look at that. Now, what I, what I didn't do, I can just dump those in. It's not going to affect it. Powder coat paint stays on the powder coat, on the, on the bullet. So then I will put that the rest of the paint back in. Let me move my, my things here. So these are ready to go and stack up. Get my got my thermometer, Harbor Freight, like ten bucks. Four hundred and ten degrees, four hundred degrees, right there, three ninety four ten. Okay, so those have been in the oven for the last ten minutes at four hundred degrees. And there's your final product, guys. So I do take the time to stand them up. Um, right now I'm going to go set them down on the concrete in my shop here because the, con the cold concrete helps cool them down faster. And so here you go. This is what they look like. Then I take my other $5 basket from Bed Bath & Beyond and we move into the next phase. So this pan is cool. Oven's off. And since I'm gloved up, what I can do is I literally just stack them you know, and there's guys, I know Elvis, Elvis, I love him to death, he's, he's a great guy, I learned so much from him, and I know he likes throwing them in the wire baskets, but I've noticed that when I'm shooting competitively, um, that's just my opinion, uh, the, the bullets um, tend to be a little more accurate, um, I don't know if it's the, the shooter or the lead or what, um, this is wheel weight lead with a mixture of... Uh, um, counter ballast. I was able to pick up about 2,000 pounds of counter ballast, and I'll do a video on that if I'm figured out finally how to cut up a 2,000 pound block of lead that's in the back of my F450 dually. But I've um, been using a, a chisel and an electric chisel, so that's been working out real well. And I've been cutting them off into uh, fairly large chunks and, and then just using them as we go. But you can see here, guys. I'm manhandling these bullets. I mean, I'm, well, if you can see it, but I'm grabbing them. I mean, I'm, I'm running through my hand. They're not, that paint's not coming off. So it really pays to get a good quality paint. Uh, whether it's powder by the pound or Eastwood or whatever color, uh, whatever company you decide to go with, just pay the extra buck or two. I mean, you're only using about 20 cents of worth of powder per batch anyway, so... It's not like you're going to go broke doing it. I mean, for God's sake, you reload. Um, they say you, you save money when you reload. You look at my shop. I don't think I've saved any. I just shoot more. But uh, So I just go through that process. I stand them up on end, especially with a little bit bigger 40 cal bullets. And when I'm about halfway done with my tray, I turn my oven back on to get it preheated. And as you can tell, I'm not being gentle with these. I just grab them. And it... Uh, I just grab them and stack them. So when you're when you're shaking them in these baskets, especially for those guys like me who, you know, shoot a lot of hollow point, um, sometimes you have to get a little little drill bit or whatever to see if you can see that, and uh, just hone it out a little bit. It's not going to affect it. So I load these up over uh, the Winchester uh, 572, the new Winchester ball powder. I'm not going to give you my grains. Uh, and what I shoot because I shoot a little bit hotter load um, for USPSA uh, major. I'm trying to make major this year. In fact, I'm thinking about taking the KKN barrel out of my Glock, the 9mm, and going back to the 40, the original stock barrel. Uh, my Glock 22 has now fired close to 3,000 of these out of the polygonal barrel with zero fouling, and I've got pictures to prove it. I actually cleaned my gun for the first time. Um, in probably a good four or five months and I've shot nothing but cast lead for the last year now uh, except for the 300 black hat when I was sighting it in and uh, I finally cleaned the barrel and I had zero fouling or zero leading inside that polygonal barrel and I think a lot of it has to do with the powder coating and uh, I don't know maybe the gun fairies who knows but I just wanted to share with you yes this takes a few minutes but as you can tell, the quality of the finished product is so much better. I want to give a shout out to Loads of Bacon.
uh, for this idea. Um, normally I use the 9mm trays when I'm doing the 9s because they're a lot smaller. But with these bigger ones, it tends to uh, work out quite well. So for those of you guys that are new to powder coating, um, especially new to casting your own bullets, don't be afraid of the paint. Um, spend the extra couple bucks a pound. Get the quality paints, no matter where you get them from. Um, just pay the extra couple bucks. Uh, you're, you're spending all this money anyway, so why not uh, you know, put a good paint on it? That's one that's going to last. And I've already done all the smash tests on these. They're all good. But I like them where you don't have to heat them up. And with this paint, if you heat up your bullets, the, the paint will actually clump. And it's not what you want. You want that static electricity built up on it to get that adherence. So anyways, guys, let me finish this up and I'll give you my final words. Um, I appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, I apologize that I haven't been putting out videos as often as I, I would have liked to because uh, time. And to be honest with you, um, with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, Let me just uh, see if I can do this and just look into the camera. So with everything going on in the world right now, it's just been pretty chaotic here. And so we've been just focusing on getting me reacclimated back to being home and back in the reloading room, back into a life. And But as we all know, this, this place is getting crazy. The politics, the, the just everything coast to coast is just getting crazy. So... Now more than ever, we need to arm ourselves, we need to educate ourselves, and for God's sakes, we need to defend ourselves. And I think that's become my motto because it's so true. We have to arm ourselves. We have to take the Second Amendment seriously. Our forefathers and all of the military who have fought, bled, and died for our freedoms, all of that, you do not want that to be in vain. So for me, I will continue to fight for the Second Amendment. I'll continue to fight for the First Amendment. Um, I'm just waiting for YouTube to ban my videos like they've done everybody else. So... Guys, I truly appreciate y'all subscribing. Thanks to the new subscribers. I'm working on a, uh, a new giveaway coming up here this uh, for the month of March. I'll give you more information on that here coming up soon. So anyways, thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again for subscribing. If you like what you see, if you have any questions, comments, or editorials, feel free to leave them below. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you at the range.